What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back again for another reaction, and today is a great day, a wonderful day, a beautiful day, because it's another Sweden day. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in such a weird mood. Um, six months in Stockholm, living in Stockholm, a British person's point of view. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Six months living in Sweden. Six months. Okay, let Just me find an area to record in and then we're gonna get into six months of living in Stockholm, Sweden and what it's like if you're mm. thinking about living here. Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to this video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about six months living in Stockholm, Sweden and what it's like. A bit of my backstory, I have lived in the UK for my whole life. I am Me. half Swedish, my mum is Swedish. Oh. We come here every year, but I have never really lived here and actually absorbed in that Swedish culture. So I. So she's half Swedish, but she's never lived in Sweden. Interesting. So she should be able to speak Swedish, right? If her mum's Swedish. I've been living here since January 2022, and it is okay. now July, and it has been six months. So I thought I'd record this video just letting you know what it's like to live in Sweden and some things that I have learned. I have 10 things that I'm gonna go through, just things that I've learned, things that I've discovered about Stockholm, and if you're thinking of moving here or if you're just intrigued, then I'm sure you will like this video. But first of all, I have a little bit of a disclaimer, I guess. I just wanna say, life is what you make it. So I'm gonna tell you what it's Agreed. like living in Stockholm, but to be honest, it doesn't matter where you live, you create your own life. So if you are unhappy in your situation now, yes, a new destination might help, but overall, it's all about what's in here, your thoughts create your life, and you control your thoughts and you can choose how you want to live. I just wanted to put that Agreed. out there because I know that for me, I was almost like relying on living in a new location, but all of the mindset things that I had to work on back in the UK, I still had to work on here because those things didn't disappear just because I moved to a new country. Anyway, let's get into the 10 main things I'm gonna focus on all about living in Stockholm, Sweden. Okay, so number one, I wanna talk about the people and the culture. Honestly, I think the people here and the culture here is different from any other country. I didn't realize there would be such a huge difference comparing Sweden to the UK, but there truly is. I Tell me about it, girl. Tell me about it. I really want to know if there is a big difference. And as a British person, I'll be able to relate to what she says. So I'm, I'm interested. I'm very interested. I feel like Swedish people, obviously wonderful, kind, very kind and generous people. But it takes a while for them to kind of open up as you... If you've researched a bit about Sweden, Swedish people are very reserved. Mm. And you can never tell what they're thinking. So they could either really like you or really not like you. And it's very hard to tell <laughs> until you get to know them, which takes a lot of time with Swedish people. So the culture is super, super different, especially comparing to the UK, where a lot of people are more open and chatty and just kind of more like banter. Whereas Swedish people, although they are super polite and they say hi and things like that, they are more reserved if you are really looking to build that friendship. So that is something that I've had to get used to. I've had to kind of not think, oh my God, do they hate me? And just kind of think, well, they're Swedish. I will never know. Unless I keep trying, then maybe in a few months, maybe in a few months I'll know. Number this is why I'm glad I've researched about Sweden before I go to Sweden. Because yeah, I might have thought, oh my God, no, no Swedish people like me. <laughs> if you're very reserved and like not very open and like, but now I'll be like, oh, that's how Swedish people are. Like, I get it completely. I'll be like, yeah, it's fine. Number two. And I like slow burners. I like to work on people. Do you know what I mean? I like chipping away very slowly at people and get, get into the layers. I don't like people that are too, like, in your face. So I'll be fine. Two is it's a very clean city. That is just something that I have noticed and a lot of my friends who have moved here have also noticed. The buildings here in Stockholm are beautiful. I'll try and insert some photos here. They are colorful, they are beautiful and they are really taken care of. There are people who go around the city and clean the city and 
Stockholm yeah. is just a really taken care of place and you can really tell when you're walking through the city just how beautiful it is and I really really appreciate that and as well as it being a clean city I'm just going to touch on the water here you can swim in like all of the water around the city which is my favorite thing ever in the summer I just think that's so so nice that you can go into the city you can work it's clean you water can go to the office, anything, and then you can go swimming because Stockholm is made up of 14 islands, I think. So there's actually a lot of water around and it's all clean and it's all really nice water. That's what I always forget, that Stockholm is made up of islands. Just I just forget that. I just think it's a one big landmass, one big city. Because I think of, when I think of a capital city, I think of London, um, you know, or I think of like, I don't know, like, I think, or Paris or whatever and I think oh it's just one big massive city but actually you're broken up quite a lot which makes you quite a unique city it makes Stockholm quite unique in that sense nice water to swim in as well as the tap water the quality of tap water here in Sweden is really high quality which is just that's just a really nice thing to have I think <laughs> so yeah number I need I needed her to compare it to the UK. I knew she just she, she didn't do that, which is annoying. Um, depending on where she's from in the UK depends on the quality of the water. She sounds like I want to say like Midlands area, maybe towards the south. The more south you go, the poorer the water quality in the UK. If you're from the north, if you're from Yorkshire or Lancashire, the further north you get normally the cleaner and more drinkable the water is so um what is she comparing the water to that's what i want to know and number two was just that how clean the city is and how clean stockholm is i just really really noticed that i think comparing to bigger cities maybe like london and even manchester liverpool places mm. like that where i have been in the past I have noticed that Stockholm is really pretty and really clean and really taken care of. Number three, okay, this is for the single gals out there. Um, gals. I've heard this and may or may not have experienced this, but dating in Sweden can be a challenge. It's what I've heard many people say, but okay. Swedish, as I said, Swedish people are very reserved and that applies to dating also. So there are... Um, there are some funny like videos out there on YouTube all about dating in Sweden and dating Swedish men and I think it's actually quite hilarious and a lot of them are true obviously there are exceptions I'm not going to group everyone together but dating can be a challenge just because men in Sweden are very different to the UK they expect you to approach them most of the time they might yeah. make a little bit of eye contact but I think that's as far as it goes the majority of the time and they're more like they wait until you approach them because I'm not really sure to be honest so yeah I think when that's got to be good for women though because um for a woman you could just it's flipped to, it's reversed compared to like the wet like to america and britain and other places where men normally approach women and men can be a bit of a pest <laughs> a bit too much a bit too much whereas uh it's flipped on its head and men are more reserved and maybe a bit more respectful and they allow women to come and approach them first i think that's a good thing and maybe a breath of fresh air for anyone that's not from sweden i don't know when it comes to dating you really have to be kind of confident and put yourself out there as a woman because men can be quite reserved and you will never know if they actually like you uh, so yeah that's a challenge because compared to the uk i'm very used to i guess guys being very outgoing and very laddy Forward. if that is a word but that is how i describe it i guess and swedish men are not quite like that but that's not to say that it's not possible i have a lot of friends over here who are in relationships with who are in amazing relationships with obviously swedish men and swedish people and it works i think it just takes a lot of getting used to again the culture and the dating culture here and meeting people um you know in public places things like that i yeah or even online dating i'm i'm not even going there yet but yeah oh. <laughs> number four <laughs> the taxes are ridiculous okay so the taxes? obviously 
If you have followed me for a while, I run my own business and the taxes here are quite extreme, which, you know, I am I'm not against taxes at all in any way. I just think Sweden they are extreme when it comes to taxes and how much we have to pay which I understand the city is beautiful it's clean it's really taken care of the public transport is amazing which I think is one of my points but yeah the taxes are very high even if you're mm. not running your own business even if you're just working in a restaurant cafe anything like that taxes are quite high here so that's something that i just had to get used to but also the wages are better you do get paid better and the quality of life here is i i wouldn't mind the high taxes i don't think if if i knew that the taxes that i paid i could visually see a representation of what those taxes do and like how well the city is kept and where like you know people are looked after like the vulnerable and all that i'll happily pay that much you know uh, whatever amount is needed to support life living in sweden um that would i wouldn't mind that at all and I'd, I'd, I'd mind it if i paid high taxes and i didn't think that they were using my money uh in the best best way very good. Number five. Okay, this is from a vegan perspective, guys, but people love meat and fish here. I was just really surprised okay. at that because I think Sweden and Scandinavia is marketed as a very sustainable and forward thinking and really environmentally friendly country, which obviously you. Uh, this is her opinion because she's a vegan, which I respect, but that's her opinion. Some meat eaters may not feel the same way because, you know, avocados and what cut this bit out cut it yeah i get what she's saying but i mean veganism also can support some unsustainable things as well like isn't it avocados that that are that destroy the the environment and there's like crops that are being cut down pesticides that's being sprayed there's all sorts of things i just think live your life the best you can and try and minimize your carbon footprint it doesn't matter if you eat meat or you're vegan just, just do your best so you can have your points about veganism not being not being sustainable environmentally friendly blah 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 but i am plant-based so she read my I mind that wow as well as there are so many vegan options here people love their fish their eggs their caviar and their, their meat i'm like wow it's a big market here but also veganism is growing here as stockholm as i said it is still quite forward thinking in terms of wherever you go there are vegan options as it's a big city so you know it's likely to have that just like places like london manchester liverpool things like that there are lots of vegan options here which i am very very grateful for but for example midsummer and christmas it's all about that meat fish eggs cheese all of those things and i was like wow like there really are no vegan options when it comes to the Swedish traditional holidays. So if you are vegan or plant-based or anything along those lines, then Sweden is actually a great country to move to. Just when it comes to those traditional days like midsummer, Christmas and the special holidays, things like that, just bring your own food, basically. That's well, what I've learned. If you're vegan, then you do have to bring your own food. I was vegan for a year, just under a year. And at Christmas came round and I had I brought my own uh, like nut roast on Christmas day to my parents' house and had to, and I cooked it myself and I had it and I had it with all the trimmings and it was fine. As a vegan, you just have to kind of deal with that and that's just how it is. Um, bring your own snacks and you'll be good. So point number six was actually being vegan is easy here, but I just touched on that in point number five. So I'm gonna make point number six about the public transport because the public transport here in Stockholm and around the Stockholm area is absolutely amazing. It mm. can be quite pricey, I think. I pay for like a monthly travel card, 
which works for me because I'm on the tube most days to be honest almost every day pretty much and it means that I can travel as much as I want in that month it can be quite a cost if you are a student here it's so much cheaper I wish I was a student sometimes yeah I wish I was a student sometimes so that I could get that discount but yeah if you are a student here then it is slightly cheaper to travel but if not then still travel passes and travel cards and the transport here is really really good so you don't have to worry about traveling around the city it's That's super good. easy there's an app you can get on boats buses tubes trains all for the same pass coming from a small town in the uk i'm like wow i love that number seven i wonder what small number she's seven from. okay this is one i recently discovered actually about two weeks ago but clubs and getting into nightclubs can sometimes be quite discriminative can discriminate what am i saying can discriminate against people who don't speak swedish discriminate discriminatory is that the word she's looking for it's a hard word <laughs> which I found really, really, really shocking. A lot of the time in Stockholm and in Sweden, people are very, very kind to people who don't speak a lot of Swedish. But I have heard from friends in the past that if you are trying to get into a club and you don't speak Swedish and there's a queue for the club, the club is quite busy, sometimes they will just turn you down, which I was honestly surprised about because I was with a friend of mine and she was saying, you speak Swedish like so that we can get into the club. And I was like, wow, that's really crazy. There is always more work to do in. So is that true? Like if they hear someone that doesn't speak Swedish, it's like, no, you can't get in because you can't speak the language. Is that true? Let me know. That area and I am speaking from a very privileged position. I'm a white blonde person. But that is what I have found when it comes to getting, to getting into nightclubs sometimes. They want you to speak Swedish and if you don't, they can actually turn you down. Really interesting. Number eight, you have to be strategic when you are going out to buy alcohol. So when it comes to buying alcohol in Sweden, System yes, you have to be strategic because there is an alcohol shop here called System Belaget. Yes. Here it is. That means that in normal now. food shops, you cannot buy alcohol, really. You can only buy a really, really low percentage of alcohol, maybe like 4%, maybe 5%. I don't even think, I don't even think 5%, 4, 4, 4.5% 4 maybe. But if you wanna buy spirits, wine, better ciders, more variety of beers, etc., etc., then you have to go to a special alcohol shop which closes early on saturdays i think at 4 mm. p.m and it's closed on sundays so you have to be really strategic when buying your alcohol not really strategic because it's open from monday to saturday that's kind of a lot of time to purchase your alcohol just saying and who purchases alcohol every day you, you'd buy in bulk anyways even in the uk you'd purchase you'd purchase in bulk for your alcohol so yeah well, buy it during the week or early on a saturday it might even close at 3 p.m and yeah just remember that keep that in mind because you can't just buy alcohol from everywhere and i don't think they stay open till late in the evenings as well to be honest i think that's quite a good idea and i don't know if it's like to regulate alcohol consumption or anything like that but that is how it works and also if you're 18 you can drink here but you have to be 21 to buy alcohol from those alcohol shops, system ah. below get, which to me is is quite bizarre to be honest. The so you can drink in a bar at eighteen, but you can't actually buy alcohol in bulk. No, it's not silly because in a bar at eighteen, you can go to a bar and I guess they can control the amount that you're drinking. Whereas if you're like young, eighteen to twenty one. Um, and you go to a system below it and you decide you want to buy purchase a crate of beer being younger you're probably going to drink that whole crate of beer whereas it's just more controlled isn't it if you're in a bar it's more controlled i get it the age rules here are really crazy if you're 18 you can drink but some clubs have the age limit of 23 some 21 but some 23 oh, okay like that that's so random to me be strategic if you want to be buying alcohol and it is a good tip to buy spirits and drink alcohol before you go out on a night out because alcohol is so expensive here if you are going on a night out in stockholm be ready 
to spend a lot of money. Especially if you're drinking cocktails and wines and nice drinks, then it can be quite wow. spenny. Number nine, again about the people. People gen generally take care of themselves here and they are quite independent and they stick to a time limit. Swedish people are usually very on time, very strategic about their time and they're also really independent people. That is what I have found. They do their own thing and that can also come across as like, oh, do they want to be friends and things like that? But I'm sure they do, but they are just very independent people in themselves. And that is what I have learned about Swedish people when I've been living here. Number okay. 10, the brunch selection is beautiful. If you know me, you know I absolutely love brunch. It's one of my favorite activities to go out and have some brunch with my friends. And the brunch selection is just amazing here. There are so many brunch places and I'm actually going to record a video. I actually love brunch as well. Brunch is like one of my favorite things. I feel like you get to a certain age and brunch is kind of like what you do. I feel like people that are in their like late twenties <laughs> to maybe early forties are like really into like brunch. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment section below if you like brunch as well all about my favorite brunch places here in Stockholm. So if you want to see that, do let me know down below because I've been having a lot of brunch and it really makes me happy. And the selection here is really amazing, especially if you are vegan. There are lots of options for vegan brunch. But even if you- That vegan agenda. <laughs> you are not, there are still a amazing huge idea. variety of brunch places here in Stockholm. So if you like brunch, Stockholm is a nice place. Okay, so that was everything. That was 10 things I have learned about Stockholm since I have been living here. And if you are thinking of moving. Tack. Okay, guys, that was very good. That was enjoyable. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.